And welcome to the conversation room. I'm so excited about our guest today, Marilyn Hickey. And I know that she's not a stranger uh, at all to the body, but especially to you, our viewers. Uh, she is a stellar woman of God. She is uh, greatly esteemed as a Bible teacher, has been faithfully teaching the word for uh, years. She's an evangelist that has brought uh, literally millions of people to know Jesus Christ as their savior. She is an author. She is a television host and so much more. So Marilyn Hickey, it's uh, wonderful to have you with us. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted. We are especially excited because you have a brand new book coming out and it's called Read It, Speak It, and Do It. And exactly. um, I'm very excited about it. I've, I've, I've read through it. And one of the things I love about you, um, Marilyn, is that when you um, communicate the word, it's so easy to understand. It's so easy to grasp. And when you read through the book, I'm thinking, yes, yes, yes. You know, and it just establishes firm foundations. It's, it's, it's wonderful. So thank you so much for this contribution. Well, I love doing it. You know, books can really change your life. So Absolutely. and they can just refresh you. I said they you can give people books and they work while you sleep. That's right, especially these days because they can get audio versions of them as well. So oh, you can yes. even turn on the book when you're going to sleep and have, have it read to you. It's so much fun the day that we're living in. So um, I love the the title, Read It, Speak It, Do It. Like I say, it's, it's just so easy to grasp, so easy to understand. But you had an encounter when you were... Um, 11 years of age, when you were, you know, you wanted to know where God was, and he gave you an answer. Can you share that story with us? Yes, I can. I said, God, I want to be where you are. What church are you in? And he spoke so simply to me and said, I'm in the Bible. So I really committed my life to the Bible from that time on. And I wasn't in a Bible-believing church, but I was a Bible-believer. Wow. And you have um, really uh, loved the word. I remember, and I was sharing this with you earlier, when I was a brand new Christian. So you've, you've uh, had Marilyn Hickey Ministries for 45 years, and I was born again just over 46 years ago. And it was soon after that that I actually was acquainted with your ministry and others at the time who were really releasing the importance of standing on the word of God and letting the word of God be our foundation and our plumb line and, and, and weighing up everything in life, our circumstances, our feelings, everything, make it align with that word. And so you uh, were such a part of my own foundation in the word. And one of the reasons why I love the word so much and esteem the word so much today is because of ministers like yourself who in that um, space of time really fed it. And I just want to say to our viewers, it's so important that we get this out to people, that you let people know, especially in this day and age, how important the word is, because many people are confused about the word. And they'll say, well, God doesn't really mean this. And this is okay. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. But um, it does matter, right, Marilyn? Maybe you can share Very. a little Very. bit about that. <laughs> Well, I heard ministries in that day say, you know, you need to speak the word. So I heard Kenneth Hagan, I heard Charles Capps, I heard these various people. And I thought, this really works because I was in a very liberal church, but I was reading the Bible, which is anything but liberal, it's supernatural. So there's always a process if you will give yourself to the process of the word, read a certain amount every day. Read it when you are, what can I say, alert and alive. And I mark up a Bible. So <laughs> I call this my preaching Bible. But I have this all marked up. And so if you looked at it, you'd say, my goodness, you've just written all over the Bible. But the paper is not holy. It's the message that's holy. So... I love to see what God says to me because I not only read the Bible, this is so wonderful, the Bible reads me. 
Yeah, I love that. That is so true, too. Every time you read the Bible, you can connect with that, that the Bible is oh. reading you and your heart is revealed and, and potentials revealed. It's so, so beautiful. You were saying earlier, um, Marilyn, that one of the things, and I mean, you're, you're turning 91 years of age pretty soon. And by the way, I just, I think that's amazing because you've never, you know, uh, backpedaled at all. You've just always gone forward and we can maybe talk more about that later. But you said that in your walk with the Lord, you learned that um, a good habit of reading the word has um, kept you strong. And would you like to share something about the importance of godly habits? Well, I, I think you have to find the time when you're the most alert. My best time is early morning. So, you know, I read the Bible early in the morning, but I also pray, God, show me what you want to say to me. So if there's certain things that he says to me, I mark it up. So if you looked at my Bible, you'd say, oh, how messy you are. You're right. It's all marked in. And then I think even now I read through the Bible at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. And I love it. And I think there are a lot of little times that you have that you just waste. Why waste them? When I get on a plane, I got my Bible there. I can read, you know, so they're serving me juice and coffee and I'm being served the word of God. I'm serving myself with the word yeah. of God. Well, the word is so life-giving. It says the entrance of it fills you with light. Oh, it's just it so beautiful. The word is so awesome. And I'm uh, with you on that. I like trying to read through my Bible every every year. And I yes. try to get a new Bible and mark it up fresh. <laughs> and, oh, good. Uh, and, and actually, I've, I've got Bibles for my children. I've got Bibles for my grandchildren in the safe. I'm saving them for them. And they're all marked up. They've got coffee stains in them because I think I have coffee with Jesus. But, <laughs> but anyways, um, um, we just want to encourage you as viewers that God will speak to you through the word. If you read it, he will speak to you. Just read it even until he does. Because there will be something that touches your heart. You know, just, you know, and you can just read a few chapters a day. Four or five chapters a day will get you through the Bible every single year. And it, it doesn't take that long even. You know, we give ourselves to so many different things in a day. But when you give yourself to the word of God, it'll, it'll change your life. It'll set you on a firm foundation. I think you need to find the time when your mind is most alert. So mm -hmm. some people, their mind is most alert in the evening. If that's for you, then you need to set aside a certain time and maybe how much you're going to read and how much you're going to be open and then taking notes on it. Oh, because honestly, if your heart is open, God is going to talk to your open heart. Right. I bet you anything that that's where a lot of your teaching and your your uh, words come from is out of your morning Bible readings. Right. It Put does. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes later in the day, I'll pick up the Bible and look at the scriptures that were that morning. And I think, my goodness, that is wonderful. I never saw that before. So it's not like, oh, I've read the Bible. I've read the Bible. It's like the right. Bible is reading you. Right. And it's such a book of life. I know sometimes there'll be just one little thing that pops out. And I think, oh, Lord, this is good. I need to study this more. And so before you know it, three hours have gone by. And you're going <laughs> inside of that one thing that turns out to be you right. know, a book. <laughs> you, know, you look it up, yeah. Thing. Yeah, it's so, so good. It's such an adventure to um, just be hungry for the word and follow him in that word. Okay, also you said to read the word, but then to speak it. So why is it important to speak the word? Well, I, I believe speaking takes your heart with it and your mind with it. So I speak promises because sometimes you get up in the morning and think, dear Lord, another day. You know, but I think if you speak promises, then you're getting the provisions God has for that day. 
And I believe every day God has provisions for you. Amen. And they are just so wonderful. So, you know, this morning we knew we were going to do television taping and some various things. So I read the Bible. I read it out loud. I spoke promises. And, you know, it says, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I mean, that is powerful stuff. So I may get up in the morning and think, oh, brother, I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. You know, I've got all these problems to speak or to think of today. But when you start speaking the promises, the mountains begin to move. And most of all, you get what's on the other side. Amen. I like to go to nations. And, you know, now I get invitations from nations that hate women, but they love me. That's, that's a miracle. <laughs> That's a miracle. <laughs> because I'm sure that you have declared over your life that God surrounds you with favor as a oh, shield. Oh, you're right. right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so it's working. It's manifesting in your life. You know, it's just all the days of your life you've been uh, walking in that. I think, too, um, I remember a, a speaker saying years ago, he says that um, it is proven, I guess, through behavioral testings and scientific testings, that um, the person you believe the most is yourself. And so if you are speaking the word yourself, you're actually hearing yourself speak the word. So it helps the, the heart believe in faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So you hear yourself speak, it'll help you to believe. And hearing other people speak the word, a lot of times they have revelation that you don't have and you can gain from their revelation. That is so mm -hmm. excellent. So you never quit learning. You're always a learner. Amen. We, we live in such a, a fun day right now with all the technology that's available to us. And uh, one of the things that I like to do in our home is put on the word because on YouTube, you can get all kinds of readings of the word of God. So even when you're out of your home, you can have the word being spoken in your home. And that word attracts the spirit of God. It attracts the angels of God. It attracts, you know, the the very essence of what it's representing. So um, for our viewers right now, we, we want you to get hungrier than you've ever been for the word of God, but speak it. Bless, bless your family. Bless those around you with the word. Speak the word, and uh, you'll be blessing yourself as well. And then you also have do it. So it's read it, speak it, and then do it. Why is doing the word important? Well, because praying for the sick lay hands on the sick. So now this will sound really crazy, but sometimes I sit out on my front porch. I live in a cul-de-sac and people come over and say, would you mind praying for me? And they are not born again people. So I'm looking for opportunities on planes, trains, wherever, because there are hungry people and there are people with questions and we have the answers in his word. And there's no, no joy like leading somebody to the Lord. It's like almost getting saved again yourself. It's true. It's true. And the Bible says that we are not to just be hearers of the word, but we are to be doers also. Right. So yes, yes. Um, we we need to activate that word to see it. Uh, become vibrant in our life. And there's so much potential that is waiting for us if we just do it. And I think, Marilyn, a lot of people think, well, I don't know if I could do that. That looks bigger than what I'm capable of doing. Well, of course it is. When I in God, of course it's bigger. And I know that um, as a uh, woman of God, you have gone into nations of the world where it's not even allowed to have the gospel preached, but you... You didn't let that stop you. Um, it wasn't allowed to bring Bibles into those nations, but you didn't let that stop you because you saw the word and you just went forth and you did it. And it brought forth fruit where you know millions of people now are in the kingdom of God because you were faithful to do the word. 
And I just believe that there's so much waiting for all of us if we will just do the word. Well, and I think, too, you know, they told us, well, you can't do this. But God didn't tell me I couldn't do it. Right. And, you know, people said, oh, you don't sing, you don't play the piano, you don't play the organ. You just teach those silly little home Bible studies. And those silly little home Bible studies put me on radio, put me on television. Really, they put me all over the world. And so being a woman now in some places is really a blessing. And so in Saudi Arabia, they really like women. And they especially like old women. So I fit it very well. I want to go back. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, um, as a woman of 91, almost 91 years of age, I just want to commend you. You look fabulous. You um, don't let any grass grow under your feet. You are still serving the Lord with all your heart, with vibrancy. Uh, as your days are, so your strength has been. But I want to address our seniors in the audience right now, um, because I think a lot of times in our culture, the, the voice of the enemy in our culture is, oh, you're older now, you need to sit down, you need to retire, you need to take it easy, you need to live on limited income. And it's like a diminishing of what we're really called to do because the Bible doesn't say anything. I don't think I've never seen it that we're supposed to slow down as we get older. In fact, I, I think it says that we're going to be full of sap in our older years and we can be fruitful our whole life. So how would you address this? How would you address our seniors that are watching this right now? Well, I would say set some goals for yourself. You know, how many people would you like to reach this week? And how would you like to reach them? You know, would you like to pass out tracks? Now, I'm not talking everything because I do it all. Would you like to witness on airplanes? What would you like to do? How could you reach some people? Maybe they're your relatives. I don't know. I think my relatives probably, I don't know where they are now. I'm so old. You know, I'm not sure where they are. I'm wanting to go back and visit the little town I was born in in Texas. So I just think, you know, if you want your life to be dull, don't witness, don't read the Bible, don't pray, because it'll get you into the most exciting arena in your whole life. Amen. There is so much more for all of us. There is so much more for you that are watching. And you might be watching right now, and maybe you don't even know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Oh, you say, but I've gone to church the odd time. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Just like going to McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. But to know Jesus, to know him, to have him living inside your heart, he'll transform you. He'll give you a brand new life. He'll forgive all your sin. He will, he will come and live inside of you and transform you from the inside out. And I remember the night that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I was a mess before I came to Christ. I was a mess. And we all are a mess in some way, even if you think, well, I'm a pretty good person. I've lived a good life. But, you know, next to a holy, holy God, you compare that and you're still a mess. We all need Jesus. And the Bible says there's only one way to come to our Father, one way, and that's through Jesus. One way to be reconciled to God your God, your creator. And so Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So therefore, if you believe in Jesus and receive him as your personal Savior and Lord, he will come in and give you a brand new life. The Bible says when you do that, old things pass away, all things become new. And so if you want to receive Jesus Christ, maybe you've never received him before, or maybe you used to walk with Jesus, but then you just went away from him. Maybe you were hurt or disillusioned, but it's time to come back. God welcomes the prodigal son's home. This might be your hour. So just write in the comments section, I need Jesus. I'm going to have Marilyn pray for you in a moment to receive Jesus as your Savior. And he's going to come in and a miracle of new life is going to take place. So just write in the comments section, I need Jesus. 
Marilyn, could you pray for our viewers that want to receive him? So, Father, I just pray for everyone who's watching this or who's going to watch it, that you're going to touch them by the Holy Spirit. And you're going to open their hearts, open their eyes, open their ears to godly things. And may their days ahead be their best days. This is, I think people think, oh, Jesus is just a religion. No, Jesus is a person. And you're opening your heart to the supernatural. I have lived a supernatural life. If you ask me, aren't you sorry? No, I'm from a little town in Texas, you know. And I, you know, and I had people who said to me, you'll never do anything. And yet God takes you and gives you the most supernatural life in the world. So I believe you're going to have the most supernatural life in the world because you're going to say, I repent of my sins. I invite you, Jesus, who died for my sins, to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. And I give you my life for whatever you have. You have the best and you have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now, when you call upon the name of the Lord and invite him in, he doesn't hesitate. He comes. He comes he, in. He's in you now. If you if you prayed that prayer, he's in you now. Now, I want to be able to connect with you. If you could write us at Jesus at PatriciaKing.com, we want to pray for you. We want to give you some uh, information so that you can grow in your faith. And also, you can go on a website called FindingJesus.me. And I've got just little teachings that will help get you acquainted with Jesus, your Savior, how to get filled with the Holy Spirit, how to read your Bible, how to pray, all the things that will connect you to relationship with Jesus Christ. And we'd love to help you in your walk that way. Now, I know that there's probably a number of you that need healing right now. And we believe that Jesus is a healing God. We believe he's a God of miracles. And so we're going to pray for you. And you might want to write in the convert or in the uh, chat section um, what you need healing for, because we're going to target that before the Lord. We are going to call forth his healing power to come on you. And we get miracles all the time because there's there's no time or distance in the realm of the spirit. The name of Jesus is so powerful. He will heal you. And Marilyn, there are so many people that need healing that are watching right now or will be watching. And you know our healing God so well. And you've seen him heal so many. And he's going to heal some today. Would you honor us with praying for those who are sick and need healing? And I just want to add this one thing. You know, they told me I could never have a child. And you see, Sarah, I tell you, when I look at what God does in the impossible, so whatever your need is for healing, we Thank believe you. for the impossible today. So, Father, I just pray for every person watching this program. I send the word that heals them and delivers them Thank from you. every destruction. I tell you, devil, you are bound and defeated. And this is God's property. Get your hands off in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now we want to hear your testimony. I believe some of you are being supernaturally empowered with healing this very moment. Um, I see kidneys being healed. Um, I see lungs being healed. Someone had a congestion in your lungs. And all of a sudden, if you start breathing right now deeply, you'll see that that congestion's gone. Someone's sinuses are clearing up. Migraines are lifting. Headaches are going. Lower back pain. Come on, sit up and move that lower back. You'll find the Lord has touched you. Do what you couldn't do before. Test out this uh, glorious um, release of God's healing power in your life. And his, his word is at work within you. He is, a, he is a healing, miracle-working God. So as we wrap up right now, Marilyn, is there anything that you would like to say to address our viewers? Well, I like the word surely. God says, surely blessing, he will bless you. And surely multiplying, he will multiply you. So the promises of God have a surely with them. So those of you who are reaching out to those promises, remember, surely. Surely. Don't give up until you win. 
sometimes I think we give up a little bit too soon yep. and don't give up. And so there are things I'm holding on to, nations I want to go to. You say you're too old. No, no, I'm just right. And so God is going to open the doors and give me favor in Islamic nations. And literally thousands of Muslims are going to be born again, spirit filled, healed. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Yes, yes, I love it. Okay, so we just want to remind you all of Marilyn's new book coming out. In fact, you can probably pre-order it now. Um, it's called Read It, Speak It, and Do It. We want to encourage you to go Mar to Marilyn's uh, website, follow her um, on her media. And uh, I know that her books, many books, are available on Amazon. In fact, she's got her whole uh, life memoirs um, uh, ready and and up. It's been up for, I guess, a couple of years now, I think. Um, but there's so many good things. And you can glean from all the revelation that God has, has fed into her. And that's established word that's been through the fire, that's been through the testing, and it's standing. And that can get inside of you as you receive that input. So God bless you. And thank you again, Marilyn, for the honor of hosting you today. And uh, thank you for all that you've done. Uh, for God's people, for the lost, for the nations of the world. And may you receive even increased strength in this hour to fulfill all your dreams and more. And give Sarah my love. God I will bless. do it. And thank you for everything today. <laughs> okay.